We told you to wait until Friday until we had reviews, and now the reviews are in. I'm Rob Steele, that's Todd Vandenberg, and Lee Val, I think, is still hiding under his desk. But that's okay, we've all got movies to review. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Bit of an echo, even. <laughs> It's Friday. It's time for you to watch a movie because the work week is technically done unless you have to work tomorrow, at which point watch a movie tonight anyway. Where do we want to start? Who wants to jump in first? Because we're all doing movies that, uh, frankly, are not recent. I'll start off. I'll I'll start off real fast because my my Speaking speaking of which. And yours are good. So last night I watched a great movie uh, called uh, Birth of a Nation. And uh, fantastic, <laughs> really showing today's ages, uh, modern values. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, so I'll start with Out of Sight, which is a, a movie that's actually you can watch on Netflix now. And I haven't seen it in a while, and I've seen it several times. But I, directed by Steven Soderbergh, stars George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, um, Bing Rames is in it. A lot of secondary characters that you'll know. Um, but it, it, the the thing about this movie is it's if you've seen get get shorty which is elmore leonard the same same author um wrote uh the books for both of those films has the same kind of vein of that it's it's a basically a heist film um except uh, it really is just a jailbreak and then george Clooney's a bank robber and he's trying to rob a guy he he went he was in jail with um the storyline is is pretty simple don Cheadle's in it too uh, he's uh, he's a plays a bad guy and uh, they kind of group together and try to steal these diamonds, uh, uncut diamonds, from the person they went to jail with. But the thing that makes the, the movie fun to watch is exactly that. It's just fun to watch. The actors uh, um, have good lines. It's a well-written story. It's dr- Steven Soderbergh directed it, so it's well, well-directed. Um, he uses a uh, kind of a, a cinema um, gimmick in that he uses a lot of – ends a lot of scenes with, like – photos or stoppage of of the actors themselves who are focused on that scene um which is a really good gimmick it, it almost reminds me of something scorsese would have done and, and this film kind of has a scorsese feel and i think probably purposefully by by soderbergh um but you know the, the storyline is pretty simple um but it still keeps you kind of on your toes and it keeps you guessing and, and i use that phrase on your toes a little bit uh, tongue-in-cheek because there's a lot of boxing in the film um, and it kind of revolves around a boxer, or part of it revolves around Don Cheadle's character, who is a former boxer who wants to steal these two. But like I said, it's it's not overly violent. There is some violence in it, but it's not gonna you're not gonna be gro- grossed out by it. Uh, there's one scene where it's Steve, not it's it's not it's not Tarantino even, but uh, it has Steve Zahn in it, and there's it, there's some hint that he may have to cut this person up after. Uh, but you don't see it or anything like that. But it affects Steve Zahn's character, and 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 that's one of the more poignant uh, moments of the film. But it's it's just fun to watch if you, if you're sitting around and you want to have a movie that you don't have to uh, get stressed out by the drama of it, uh, and and it has moments of, of funniness and just it is what it's supposed to be, which is a very entertaining, fun film to watch. Watch Out of Sight on Netflix, which I might be doing tonight. Because I don't have anything else. I don't have a life. <laughs> as, as evidenced by the movie I'm, I watched this week, which actually I watched it again. I, I watched this movie periodically because this, this came out in, I believe it was 1985. And I believe it's also the only movie ever based on a board game that worked. And I'm talking about Clue, <laughs> which had, first off, a magnificent cast of, I don't know that any of them were, uh, you know, big name actors. They were all, you know, level two. Uh, Tim Curry and Martin Mull and Eileen Brennan and a ton of other people. He says, knowing there's a cast of nine people in the entire movie. Anyway, um, it's actually, you know, the board game is a whodunit, and so is the movie. And frankly, you don't really know who did it. So it makes for a good murder mystery movie. But there is also a ton of uh, sarcastic humor that and one-liners and everything that actually works without it dragging it into the airplane area of stupid comedy. This actually had moments where you think this could be a stupid comedy. If you watch the trailer, you're going to go, this is going to be a stupid comedy. It's actually rather well thought out and seems mildly intelligent at some points, which is kind of a scary concept for a comedy movie. Um, but it also had a gimmick to it, which you're not going to get 
uh, watching it at home. The gimmick, when it came out at the time, and, and I remember seeing this in theaters, it had three endings to it. And when you went to see it in theater, you only got one ending. So you'd have to go back at another time and you may get the same ending. You may get a different ending. I thought that was a brilliant marketing idea. It is. Um, but now when you watch it, and I, I'll admit, I haven't looked to see if it's on Amazon or Netflix. I'm sure it's probably on both. Um, you get all three endings put together, including a, it could be this one, it could be this one, but it's really this one. Although all three of the endings work. So it, it makes for a brilliant little comedy whodunit. It's on Hulu. It's going to have a, have a lot of lines that you're going to bring to the water cooler on Monday. <laughs> it, your, your love your love for Clue rivals my love for Godzilla. I think that's <laughs> Something like that. It's Actually, I don't know that it's that much, but it, 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 it's getting there. Oh, it's, it's clearly a very that. Good movie. It's lots of fun. It's clearly it, that much. I did finally see the Godzilla trailer. It does look really good. Potentially. There, there you go. Yeah, potentially. That's... That qualifier always has to be there. That's that's for sure. Well, I will I will round up our uh, review show by living up to our motto: We watch movies so you don't have to. Uh, out of sight, you definitely want to watch it. Clue, you definitely want to watch it. Night of the Living Dead reanimated, not so much. And this is not Bride of the Reanimator. This is not a a take on Night of the Living Dead. This is the original 1968 movie, Night of the Living Dead soundtrack. The entire everything, dialogue, music, everything. But the visual portion has been replaced with animation. It's scene for scene, shot for shot, so it's the same sequence, but it's animated instead. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant idea. The execution is not that great. Uh, IMDb, uh, there's Best Romero Homage in Years. That's a, a 9 out of 10. A brilliantly novel and creative take on George Romero's seminal horror landmark, 9 out of 10. Uh, and there are also some that just say 1. Uh, like, don't waste your time, et cetera, et cetera. I'd say five or six out of ten. It, it is a fantastic idea. It, it's a tremendous concept to animate this and give it a completely different spin. The problem is in the execution. There were over a 100 animators. They each took a scene and did it in their style. So in some cases, it's rotoscope. In some cases, it's claymation. There are puppets. I, virtually any kind of animation style you can think of, it's in here. Except, I think, oddly enough, for cell shading. Anyway. I'm looking at pictures now, and there's cell shading. Oh, that's right. There was some cell shading. Anyway. um, And and that's the problem. That's the problem with it. Not the cell shading. But the different styles. It it takes you out of the film because every scene, and often within a scene, there are different styles. And it just keeps reminding you you're watching a movie instead of you instead of letting you get engrossed in the story. And it's certainly a a story that if you like horror movies, this is like, this is going back to our Sunday show. This is an iconic horror film. There's no doubt whatsoever about that. I mean, it launched, it launched an entire subcategory of horror. Not that zombies hadn't been around before, but this is like the seminal zombie movie. And it's very gripping. And it tells a really dark, obviously a dark kind of personal story. And you're constantly taken out of it by, Oh, now we're now we got puppets. Oh, now this is rotoscoped. Oh, nope. Now these are stick figures, and it just about half of the animation looks like I did it, which is, means it's awful. It is god awful. How they ever thought? Oh, I'm going to leave this in here. Mike Schneider's the project coordinator. Uh, brilliant concept, but execution is just awful. When it works, it's terrific. But there are so many iconic scenes, and if you haven't seen it there are scenes which are really horrifying uh, there's a scene with a little girl for instance and if you've seen the movie you know what scene i'm thinking about and the animation just kind of it really lessens the impact of that scene uh it just it's so many times it doesn't work so it takes a great film and if you don't like horror movies then nothing's going to make change your mind about it if you don't like horror films this is a terrible movie but it takes a great film and just makes it pedestrian because it's so uneven and reminds you, like, virtually every minute, oh, I'm watching a movie. Uh, if they had s- just gone with one style of animation, or maybe a few, or even if all of them had been good, <laughs> that would have helped a lot. But uh, it- it's worth seeing. It's on Amazon. I think it's like $3 to rent or something. If-, if you're a fan of film, of movies, of how they're done, it's definitely worth seeing. It's not worth seeing if you want to watch something that's entertaining, though, sadly enough. Uh, again, I love the, the concept. Uh, I would hope that Schneider would go back 
and work with maybe three or four of the artists who actually did really great work and remind himself that, yeah, your segment sucked and your segment sucked and your segment sucked and just repeat that to himself about 50 times and not use those guys. Uh, now, part of the problem is they all did it for free and I get that, but the artist did, Schneider didn't, but dude, I really don't understand how he could have watched that and thought, this is, this is what I wanted to do because it can't possibly be of what he wanted to come out it, because it's so damn uneven and it just destroys some of the really big moments in the original film by just, oh, wow, I can't even tell what the hell is going on here because the animation is so sloppy, that I, which is also part of the problem because there are times when it's difficult to identify which character is which because the animation is so poorly done. That, that's a problem when your lead is black and he's the only black character and you still can't tell who he is in some cases. Um, not really good. And I don't think that was the message of, of it certainly wasn't the message of the original film. That's part of the message of the original film. And that, that he's uh, not trusted because he's black. Anyway, uh, if you want to see Night of the Living Dead and you want to be entertained, watch the original 1968 version. Avoid the Night of the Living Dead reanimated version. But you should come back on Sunday when we have the Cinema Savants news show where you'll find out all the stuff that's coming up uh, that, that we care about. And someday we'll do some one of those shows that has no superhero movies in it just for just to be different. That's not necessarily this Sunday. I'm just letting you know that it's you know a possibility. Never happen. Yeah, probably not. Not at this rate. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on YouTube or iTunes or the Google Play Store, and we'll see you on Sunday. That's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Pretty-